Shalom from Israel. My name is Daniel, and this is my wife, Devorah. Would you like to get to know your Messianic brethren here in Israel? Would you like to see and hear how they're building the kingdom of God exactly as Yeshua Jesus taught in the days of his earthly ministry? If the answer is yes, then we would like to invite you to establish your own personal connection with the household of faith in a very unique way. Did you know that some of the believers in Israel are being persecuted? Since those early days, nearly 2,000 years ago, the voices of Yeshua's disciples have not been heard outside of Israel. That is, until now. Our groundbreaking internet TV show, Revelation to the Nations, is the very first program totally dedicated to providing Israel's messianic body a voice designed to directly connect you with them. How does this happen? We're interviewing the leaders of messianic congregations and ministries here in the land. This gives you a chance to see and hear directly from them about the wonderful work they're doing how they're meeting the needs of the poor, the widows, orphans, Holocaust survivors, and more. You may not know most of these ministries are small and lack the resources to send their leaders out of Israel to generate support. It's these under-resourced ministries that need their voices to be heard. And guess what? If your heart is touched by their efforts and you decide you want to help them, you can because we provide their contact information, allowing you to establish your own personal connection with them. They're all sharing the good news when the opportunity arises. And by blessing and partnering with them, you will be helping more Jews to know their Messiah. This means you can play a direct role in helping Jews into the kingdom. And the best part is you don't have to leave home. The Israeli ministries here are very excited about this unique platform we are providing them. We hope you are too. And now stay tuned as we introduce today's guest on Revelation to the Nations. Shalom and welcome to today's program. Today we have a very special guest. Yes, Dan, we have a very, very special guest. In fact, our guest today is working with very precious people in Israel who many of us feel are truly VIPs. We want to give a special welcome to Brian Slater from Abundant Bread of Salvation. Welcome, Brian. Thank you. It's Great so to good have to you have here. you. It's good to be here today. Yes. Thank you. Well, listen, we want to know, and we want our viewers to know, what is it that actually sparked your idea to begin Abundant Bread of Salvation? And how did Yeshua call you to this work? Yeah, well, it's, it's quite uh, complex. However, we're going to give you a capsulated vision of what the Lord has done uh, in my life and through my life as he's uh, delivered me from a life of drugs, alcohol, and, and uh, uh, in coming to faith in our Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, and giving me the vision to reach out to those who are in need, and um, making Aliyah to the land of Israel over 20 years ago now, um, and he's called me to reach out to on the streets and in the homes of our people, uh, many, many are Holocaust survivors, drug addicts, alcoholics, um, widows, single mothers, um, and, and Ethiopian and Russian Jewish immigrants. Um, all of these things based on the, the, the scripture Isaiah 61. That's the real vision that God gave me uh, in, when starting this work of reaching out to our people. But I do it in mostly practical ways. And this is the most exciting thing about the work that he's doing. 
Oh, I think we, Daniel and I have talked about you so much, and we just think what you're doing is truly amazing. Indeed, indeed. Brian, it, it sounds wonderful, and we want to be able to share with our uh, audience uh, the different components. So would you please let our audience know the different aspects of this wonderful kingdom ministry that God's called you to? Amen. Amen. Well, it's, uh, there really are many different dynamics as uh, my, my whole week consists of, of uh, receiving people in our uh, dry food distribution center. This is one of the things that we do in giving out food packets. Uh, um, we're, we're distributing to over 400 people every month wow. and they, they come to us and so every week uh, they're, they're coming to our doors we have the opportunity to, to welcome, in, welcome them in to our distribution center give them coffee, tea and water and uh, just uh, receive them uh, unconditionally give them unconditionally, love them unconditionally, and, and uh, ask them if they want prayer. Um, many of them do want prayer. Many of them have received healing. Many of them have received salvation. Glory to God. And uh, 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 the ministry that we do, it's about building relationship. Um, every week, every month, um, they come and, and they pour out their feelings to us. And so um, we also have a soup kitchen that we feed them home-cooked meal in a restaurant-type atmosphere. Um, we, we have a, a crew of volunteers. Sometimes it's a skeleton crew, and sometimes uh, it can be many volunteers. So any of you out there that want to come and volunteer, that's a plug for volunteers. Yeah, we've been there actually when yes. you were very blessed to have Amen. a wonderful amount of volunteers. So Indeed. this really adds a lot of richness to what Brian does. Yes. So please, uh, we're, so this is a big faith issue of trusting God to provide, provide volunteers, provide finances, uh, to, to, to give the food packets. It costs about four to five thousand dollars every month wow. just for that. And that's not including the lights and the water and the rent. Um, there's many other uh, dynamics of the ministry uh, where we take uh, special trips for Holocaust survivors uh, on biblical trips, which we're going to be doing one this coming Thursday in Tiberias and taking them on a boat and then having a five-star meal for them overlooking the Sea of Galilee, home-cooked meal. You really do treat them like VIPs. Royalty. Do. We yes, call it royalty. Exactly. Yes. Amen. Well, speaking of the uh, Holocaust survivors, the um, there's a lot of media, you know, about the Holocaust and about the the survivors, and and it seems to me that there has been a real change of late that people are getting more and more interested in the lives of the survivors and what's happening. That's especially here in Israel. Tell us how you became interested in helping them in particular, how many you serve approximately each month, and what are you doing to bless them? What are the unique things you're doing to bless them? Yeah, well, we, we do receive them every week. Um, in the Natani areas where I serve most of them, um, I work with uh, a branch uh, a, a nonprofit organization uh, of, of Holocaust survivors, and the leader of, of, the, of this, of this um, group, he's like family to me. And as a matter of fact, uh, we just had, had uh, a meal for my birthday. I invited them out, and, and we just had a nice time together mm -hmm. at a restaurant on the beach, and with him and his wife and another volunteer, and it was wonderful. So his branch, there's about 36 of them all over Israel of the same Holocaust survivor organization and ghetto survivors that literally went through the ghetto. And um, uh, we, we serve them by giving them food, clothing, uh, furniture if they need. Um, we, we do home visits. Um, uh, and we, we take them on special biblical trips, like I said. Um, 
and uh, also help them with optical, dental, and hearing devices that the local Israeli government does not subsidize or pay for. Mm -hmm. um, so the needs are great. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, anything that, that can be done to help us provide for them, um, just as like a wellspring into their lives, you know, we, we call out to, to dry bones, come alive. Amen. Some people might have heard that song before. And uh, really, it, it just opens their eyes and hearts and, and uh, emotions to, to, be, to help them practically like the Word of God says and, and uh, have them be open to who our Messiah is in Yeshua. Amen. 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 One thing that uh, our viewers may not know is that uh, here in Israel there are just under 200,000 Holocaust survivors that are living in Israel and somewhere in the area of 1,000 of them are a hundred years old and older. It's amazing. And the sad reality is that about 25 percent of these 200,000 Holocaust survivors here in the land live in poverty. And so a ministry such as yours, Brian, is that much more important because you are addressing a need that the government is unable to fill. And in That's fact, right. my understanding is that because the government recognizes that the need is so great for the Holocaust survivors, there is sort of a silent blinking and nodding that they are partnering with Messianic ministries here in Israel, which a lot of people are not aware of. So it's wonderful that you have been able to help address this very important need. Yes. So why don't you share a little bit with us, if you can, about how the survivors react when you talk about Yeshua. Yeah, well, um, you know, in, in just adding to what you said, you know, many of the, I work with many social workers and the Ministry of Welfare and many other secular organizations that refer people to me. And um, uh, God has given me an amazing amount of favor. Really, it's, it's, it's all about Him and, and what He's done because these people um, not only receive what I want to give them, they, they want me and everything I do to be a part of their lives. Mm. They see the love of God in action, and not just in material action, mm. but just the, the type of uh, calling and gift that God has given me, which is compassion and love. It's, it's you know, Him inside of me, and I just pour it out to them, <clears throat> whether it be hugs or kisses or holding their hand or putting my arm around them and just saying, I'm with you. And, and, uh, and doing this completely unconditionally. Hmm. And so, just like God does with you. Amen. Yep, absolutely, with like He us. does with all of us. Yeah, and this is, this is the true nature of our Messiah and King. Amen, Amen. it definitely is. Well, has, have any of the survivors, you alluded to it a few minutes ago, because people have come to faith, have any of the Holocaust survivors confessed their faith in Yeshua as their Jewish Messiah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, on, on a sad note, um, uh, there are many survivors, um, dozens of them, dying every day yes. here in the land and probably wherever they are outside of Israel as well. And so the number is dwindling very, very quickly. And, and, and I'm saying that because I want our viewers to understand that the time is short and, and uh, the set time has come to comfort our people and to let them know who is their Messiah. And so this is something that um, I do, but I do it in, in a way that is absolutely unconditional and, and we, we don't preach to them, we don't teach them. We show them and, and, and uh, we hold them and carry them through their pain and suffering and poverty. And, and, um, <clears throat> and in that way, many of them have wanted us to pray for them. Many of us uh, have come to our homes or let us visit their homes. And yes, we have had some 
Mm. Come to our Messiah so Yeshua. Wonderful. So yeah. wonderful. Slava Bogo, as we say in Russian. Oh, Slava, what is it? <laughs> Slava Bogo. Slava Bogo. A lot that of them sounds are, good. <laughs> yes, yes. A lot of them are Russian Jewish yes, believers and yes. immigrants. Yeah. And uh, we're just so happy to, to be with them. Here's a little history lesson. In 1947, the United Nations voted to partition the British Mandate for Palestine into two states, one Arab and one Jewish. As the date drew near for Israel to be officially declared a state, President Truman, a man of strong Christian faith, was under incredible pressure whether the U.S. would officially recognize the soon-to-be-born Jewish state. The majority of the power elite in Washington was trying to convince the president not to recognize Israel. In fact, things became so intense, Truman said he didn't want to talk about it with anyone any further. Enter. Truman's lifelong friend, Eddie Jacobson, a Jewish man and a former business partner who Truman served in the army with. Jacobson went to DC in March of 1948 and met with his longtime friend, the president, and asked President Truman to meet with the man who would soon become the first president of Israel, Chaim Weizmann. The president, having refused to listen to anyone, was convinced by his boyhood friend and agreed to meet with Wiseman. A few days later, Wiseman flew to Washington and along with Eddie Jacobson, met with the president. As a result of this meeting, President Truman emerged saying he would recognize the soon to be born state of Israel. Thus, 11 minutes after Israel's first prime minister, David Ben-Gurion declared statehood on May 14, 1948, the United States became the very first country to recognize the state of Israel. So God used two Jews and a Christian to be instrumental in the rebirth of the nation of Israel. And on May 25, 1948, Hein Wiseman paid an official visit to the White House and presented President Truman with a Torah scroll. And this is another example of Jews and Christians partnering together work of the kingdom. Yeah, we've actually had the great blessing at your invitation to come and attend one of the so-called royalty dinners, which uh, uh, your ministry puts on. And it's a wonderful evening. It's catered at a nice local restaurant. And uh, there's entertainment there. There's teaching there. There's fellowship there. And there's music. The music. Yes, right. There's the love of there's Yeshua. That and what have you so and sometimes they also get to share their stories if yes, they want to absolutely we, we we encourage them to share their stories and to share it with volunteers and people that come and serve with us to to let them share their testimonies of how they survived the ghetto camps yeah that must be very They're, healing they are them. true miracles that they survived yeah oh absolutely it is a miracle and you know, it's amazing that we have a population of over a thousand who are a hundred years old and older. This land is very good for the Holocaust survivors, even though there are struggles. But again, because we really do view them as VIPs, and so they're getting the love and attention from ministries like yours that are so critical and so important to blessing these people who have suffered so tremendously and who need great healing and love from Absolutely. the suffering that they've endured and the yeah. scars, the emotional and mental scars that are on their souls. Yes. So yes. We, we just think what you're doing and is so wonderful. Since you mentioned that as well and, and on the subject of of uh, them passing away quickly, uh, the event that I'm having this Thursday, they actually asked if I can cancel it because one of their members died. And, and uh, I told them, no, I am not going to cancel it. You send as many people as you can to come. We're I'm, I'm helping them to move forward in life because this is a part of healing. And, and so they'll send some to the funeral and have some come and celebrate life because that's life. Life is a part of healing and it's a part of suffering and birth and death. 
and this is something that uh, I want to encourage them because sometimes life is so challenging and difficult when they see their, their friends passing away right and left as their ages are getting older. But thank God I'm able to really just put a, a fire under them to keep them going and give them a higher quality life. Amen. L'chaim. Uh, L'chaim. Yes. <laughs> to, to life. life. Okay. Exactly. For those of you who are familiar, L'chaim. Mm, yes, to life. Right. Yeah. L'chaim. Well, Brian, this is uh, amazing. Your ministry is serving such a genuine mm -hmm. need here in Israel. And my friends, Brian's heart is one of serving and giving, and he's answering an overwhelming need here in Israel. Yeah. You're taking these Holocaust survivors to museums, biblical oh, yeah. tours, we have to, you know, tell us a little bit dances about the tours. and what have you. So can you give us a little more detail mm -hmm. about when you take them on these biblically oriented tours, what, what takes place and how they react? Yeah, well, they, they, re, they react in very positively, first of all. Um, while we're driving, um, they, they're asking when, uh, when is going to be the next time already. Wow. They're, they're so excited and and because there's many that can't come because we don't have enough room or we don't have enough funds and so we we try and do it when we can um we've taken them to the sea of galilee on on a boat trip and and to um to watch a biblical film on the sea of galilee mm. that shows the whole life and history of the messiah yeshua and uh we we take them to to uh jerusalem and we've also done uh, several messianic concerts for them mm -hmm. where I've, I've invited a hundred holocaust survivors to have a free concert and giving them um, light refreshments and sandwiches and they'll be dancing mm. and we have any volunteers come and, and pick them up and, and help them to be a part of the circle of light mm -hmm. and to give them just quality of life and let them know the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, and I just, I want to point out a lot of our viewers probably don't realize because you've mentioned that many of the Holocaust survivors are Russian and come from that part of the world. And what you may not realize is that these people lived under, you know, anti-God. They know not, they don't know much about the Bible. They don't know much about their heritage. They don't know about the land of Israel. So you're actually giving them a view of uh, the heritage that they come yes. from, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and make helping them to make a connection with the land of Israel. It's not just a place to live. It's actually about the past and their future. That's right. That's right. And, and, and on that subject, you know, Ezekiel 37, you know, every time I get together with them and do a royalty meal or, or a special event together, I will open the word to Isaiah, uh, to Ezekiel 37, and I will have everyone stand up and I will read that scripture and, uh, that talks about the dry bones coming to life and God breathing his, new, his life into them, that they may live and dwell in their land. Amen. Amen. As he and promised to them. And you're speaking a life and resurrection over them as well, mm -hmm. That's prophetically. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. It's all connected. Yeah. Wow. These trips, my friends, are so important. And Brian needs more finances to be able to, you heard that he, everybody can't go on the trips, but they love them. They want to go. And so he really needs help mm, so indeed. that you can allow more people to go. Thank you. Indeed. Yes, absolutely. Brian, it's, uh, frankly, it's an honor yes, because is. there are a lot of ministries here in Israel that are doing wonderful things. And then there are some ministries that are doing very special things. And I think it's safe to say, my friends, that this ministry is doing something very, very special. So can, can you let our viewers know if they want to <clears throat> partner with you and help you and bless you Tell them how they can get in touch with you. Yeah, well, first of all, they can uh, email me. Um, my email is brian, B-R-I-A-N, at abundantbread.com. 
www.ghanaspeaks.com. And we also have a website, www.abundantbread.com. Yes. Tell so. me something, Brian. If um, folks come from the United States <clears throat> or elsewhere, uh, is it possible for them to come and visit you while you're um, you know, conducting one of these food giveaways or, or uh, you know, the, the soup kitchen? Is it possible for someone to come and volunteer? Not, not only is it possible, it's, it's uh, highly recommended. Ah, okay. You know, so I, I don't think they have such a good trip unless they're connecting with the local people here in the land. Yes, amen. That's and, so true. Um, and most uh, tours in Israel, unfortunately, are those type that don't connect with the people. Exactly. They just go to all the sites and just like herding cattle and then get back on the plane and go back to where they came from. Right. We, I have an opportunity and an Abundant Bread of Salvation has an opportunity to welcome tour groups, welcome uh, volunteers, individuals, um, to have gatherings of, of just hearing testimonies of Ethiopian Jews and how they came here, uh, Russian Holocaust survivors and how they came here. I'm able to go to their hotels and visit them and bring the survivors with me, or they're able to come to our distribution center. I don't give any excuse not for them to visit and connect with our people. Well, folks, uh, I think that pretty much says it all. Uh, you have an opportunity to partner and bless this wonderful ministry, and you have an open invitation when you come to Israel to visit them personally and get the great satisfaction of volunteering as well. And when you do that, you are following um, the, in the footsteps of our father, Abraham, and of course Isaac and Jacob as well, and you are following in the footsteps of the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, as we say in Hebrew. And so you, we encourage you to get in touch with Brian. Bless him. If, you know, some of you don't have the financial ability, perhaps, to do things, but you can come and prayer volunteer. Networks. Exactly. There are prayer networks. He's got all kinds of ways that you can serve him and these wonderful, precious Holocaust survivors and orphans and widows and all of the people that he helps. And you will be blessed because you are blessing the children of Abraham, as it says in Genesis 12, 3. Well, friends, uh, that's all we have time for today. But we want to say thank you to Brian for coming and sharing about this wonderful thank ministry. Thank you so pleasure. much, Brian. Okay. So We're glad so to be able to share with you and our viewers. I Amen. hope to meet you all soon again. Yes. Mm. Hopefully people will come because of this and come and, yes. come and work with you. It would be Amen. wonderful. Amen. Thank you, abundant bread. Thank you, abundant bread. Tom Lord. Uh, thank you very much for your help, abundant bread. Thank you very much. Спасибо большое за все. Не могу слезы. Спасибо, дорогая. Abundant bread. Thank you, abundant bread.
Thank you, friends, for joining us today. And we hope you have enjoyed this episode of Revelation to the Nations. As you can see, Devorah and I are very excited about our fellow Israeli believers. They are continuing the vital work of the kingdom, just as Yeshua commanded nearly 2,000 years ago. What a privilege we have serving our King in the place where He was born, taught, died, rose, and will return again. It's all come full circle, but there's still much to do. Amen, Daniel. And what we are doing with Revelation to the Nations is very similar to something we see in the Bible. In the early days of the Yeshua movement, Rabbi Shaul, also known as the Apostle Paul, traveled around the Gentile world, collecting donations for the work of the Yeshua believers in Israel. His message to them is encapsulated in Romans 15, 27, which says, for if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual blessings, they should also be of service to them in material blessings. What did he mean by this? He was referring to the Jewish believers. Today, he would call them Israeli believers. Paul clearly said they should give material blessing to their Israeli brothers and sisters. We believe this is still a biblical mandate for today. We also need your prayers and support. These programs do require material resources. You can partner with us by going to our website, blessisraelnetwork.com. There you will find instructions on how to donate so we can produce more episodes. We also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Receive alerts for any new programs we record. Lastly, please consider inviting us to your congregation or ministry so we can spread the news about this groundbreaking program. Please join us and together we will raise up Zion before the nations.